Fly Guy presents Garbage and Recycling by Ted Arnold. A boy had a pet fly named Fly Guy. Fly Guy could say the boy's name, Buzz. I have a special treat for you, Fly Guy, Buzz said. Today, we are visiting a landfill. Yes, Fly Guy loved garbage. He and Buzz couldn't wait to learn more about trash. Trash from homes, schools, and businesses is called municipal solid waste. Here are some examples. Paper, leaves and grass, metal, and plastics and glass. A city sanitation department or a local garbage company is responsible for collecting, recycling, and discarding these materials. In the United States, people throw away 250 million tons of trash each year. That's more than any other country. Landfills are areas where garbage is discarded. A landfill starts as a large hole in the ground covered with clay, soil, and a plastic liner. This keeps waste from getting into the soil and groundwater underneath. Giant landfill compactors crash and pack down trash. Then the garbage is covered with a thin layer of soil. Over time, tiny organisms called bacteria eat the trash, causing it to decompose or break down. The bacteria in a landfill also cause several gases to form, including one very stinky gas called hydrogen sulfide. This gas smells like rotten eggs. It is so stinky, humans can detect it even in tiny amounts. That's why trash sometimes stinks. A fly can smell garbage from almost five miles away. Sanitation departments and garbage companies around the country collect waste using 130,000 garbage trucks and recycling trucks. These trucks haul the waste to landfills and recycling plants. A typical garbage truck can haul around 20,000 pounds of trash. Some garbage trucks use diesel fuel. Others run on a natural gas created from landfill gases. Natural gas is less expensive and better for the environment. Many trucks have mechanical arms. Controls inside the truck are used to grab, lift, and dump containers of trash into the top of the truck. Other garbage trucks are rear loaders. This means that garbage is dumped into the back of the truck. Then a shovel-like wall pushes the trash further inside. The crunch sound you hear is the trash being squished to make more room. This picture shows a diagram of the truck. We have the packer panel, the tailgate, the grab handle, the loading hopper, the loading sill, and the riding step. Sanitation workers have very dangerous jobs. Lifting heavy containers of trash can cause injuries. Workers might touch something harmful in the trash, such as broken glass or dangerous chemicals. And sanitation workers often ride standing on the outside of their trucks, so a crash with another vehicle can be deadly. Sanitation workers' uniforms help to keep them safe. They wear gloves and boots for protection, and their outermost layer of clothing makes sanitation workers more visible to other drivers. Once there is no more space in a landfill, it is covered and closed. The machine continues to vent gas that form beneath the surface. This land used to be a landfill. Sometimes the land is later turned into a park, a golf course, or even a ski resort. But what happens to garbage that doesn't get sent to the landfill? In the United States, the rest of our trash is recycled or turned into soil through composting. In the U.S., state and local governments make their own recycling laws. Starting a recycling program can be expensive, but recycling can save money and the environment in the long run. Recycling programs are expanding. Right now, 25 states have laws that say certain electronics called e-waste must be recycled. Laws like these are important because many electronics contain toxic materials that can be harmful when they end up in landfills. 
Most metal, paper, plastic, and glass can be recycled. Rubber tires and lead acid batteries used in vehicles can be recycled too. But some items like light bulbs and dishes cannot be recycled. Plastics like potato chip bags and plastic wrap cannot be recycled either. E-waste must be carefully recycled through special programs. Televisions, phones, and refrigerators are all e-waste. When a truck arrives at a recycling center, its contents are dumped out. Then recyclables are moved to a conveyor belt. Everything is separated and trash that was mixed in by mistake is removed. Similar materials are crushed, compacted, and tied up in huge cubes called bales. Then the bales are transported to different plants for processing before being made into new products. Each bale, paper, or cardboard can save about 15 trees. Let's follow a bale of plastic bottles to a plastics recycling facility. A forklift breaks up the bale and deposits it to a conveyor belt. The bottles are pre-washed and sorted by color. Next, the bottles are washed and heated to remove labels and bottle caps. The bottles are ground into flakes. Then they are washed again and dried. The flakes are melted and made into tiny plastic pellets. These plastic pellets can be used to make new things. Carpet, fleece jackets, and park benches can all be made from recycled plastic. New plastic bottles can be made too. Natural materials like fruits and vegetables, eggshells and leaves take up a lot of space in landfills, but they can be recycled through composting. This process breaks down food and yard waste into a rich soil for gardens and yards in just two to four months. Some people compost in their backyards, but some cities like San Francisco and New York are beginning to pick up this waste along with trash and recycling. This helps reduce the amount of trash in landfills. A typical American family throws away $1,300 of food in one year. Unfortunately, some trash doesn't get disposed of properly. This litter ends up in our lakes, rivers, and oceans. When plastic trash ends up in the ocean, it breaks down into confetti-sized pieces. Ocean currents have pushed millions of these plastic bits together in one part of the Pacific Ocean called the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. And this is a water sample from the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. Birds and marine animals think the plastic is food and eat it. The plastic can make the animals sick. If you like to eat fish, you might find yourself eating our ocean's plastic trash one day too. Nasty. To keep trash out of landfills, follow the three R's. Reduce, reuse, and recycle. Here's some other things you can do to cut down on garbage and trash. Only buy things you really need and use them until they wear out. Bring reusable shopping bags to the store. Reuse shoe boxes and cardboard for art projects or storage. Reduce the amount of paper towels you use in the bathroom. You only need one to dry your hands. Use a refillable container from home instead of a plastic water bottle. Compost your family's food and yard waste. Use clean, empty food jars to store leftovers or as mini flower pots. Donate used clothing, toys, and electronics. Properly recycle e-waste, metal, plastic, paper, and glass. And rinse plastic and glass containers before recycling them. Happy Earth Day! Thanks for listening!